There are over 100 billion solar systems in the Milky Way alone. So, what if we moved Earth into one of them? Same oceans, same continents, same humans yelling and doing weird dances on TikTok. But instead of orbiting the sun, we're circling a completely different star. Today, we're dropping Earth into some of the galaxy's strangest solar systems and seeing what breaks first. This is, what if we moved Earth to another solar system? Before we hurl Earth across the cosmos, let's appreciate what we've got. Our sun is chill, and that's amazing. It's a G-type main sequence star. Not too big, not too small, and not in the mood for violent tantrums every Tuesday. It's stable. It doesn't spin out fiery death rays every 15 minutes, and it's been shining at just the right brightness for billions of years. We orbit at the perfect distance, 1 AU, where water stays liquid, DNA doesn't melt, and trees don't have to wear sunscreen. Add in a big brother like Jupiter vacuuming up space debris, a moon that stabilizes our tilt, and a magnetic field that blocks radiation, and you've got Earth's deluxe survival package. So yeah, we're in the Cosmic VIP Lounge. But let's wreck that comfort, shall we? Let's see what happens when Earth moves out. Just 4.37 light years away, Alpha Centauri is the closest star system to Earth. And it comes with a twist. Two stars instead of one. Well, technically three, but Proxima Centauri orbits these stars at a much greater distance. Meet Alpha Centauri A and B, the ultimate cosmic power couple. Alpha Cent A is like the Sun's slightly buff cousin, a G-type star, just a bit hotter, brighter, and about 1.1 times more massive. Alpha Cent B is the cooler, dimmer K-type sibling, redder but equally chill. Both are over 5 billion years old, mature, stable, and long past their flare-through phase. Now, imagine we drop Earth into orbit around Alpha Cent A, at about 1.2 AU, right in the sweet spot of its habitable zone, and then dual freaking sunsets. From Earth's surface, Alpha Cent B would sometimes rise and set like a second sun, glowing gold in the sky, even bright enough to cast shadows at night. Think golden hour meets sci-fi wallpaper pack. But here's the kicker. It's actually super livable. Temperature? Perfect. UV? Comparable to Earth's. Day length? Still 24 hours. Tidal locking? No. Orbital stability? Rock solid, even in a binary system. And bonus, the night sky would never be truly dark, just softly lit by the golden glow of the companion star. No flares, no chaos, no problem. Verdict, Earth doesn't just survive here, it thrives. Now, let's get spicy. Meet Proxima Centauri, the sun's closest stellar neighbor, part of the Alpha Centauri star system, and a red dwarf with a serious attitude problem. But hey, at least we'd have planetary neighbors this time, Proxima Centauri B, C, and D. It's tiny, just 12% the mass of the Sun, barely bigger than Jupiter and about 500 times dimmer. To keep Earth warm here, we'd have to orbit ridiculously close, only 7 million kilometers away. That is 20 times closer than Mercury, basically hugging the flames of a cosmic campfire. And that's when things start to go south. Problem number one, tidal locking. At that range, Earth wouldn't spin. Instead, we'd face a permanent cosmic stare down one side always in daylight, the other in endless darkness. Imagine Australia slowly roasting under a dim red sun, while Canada freezes over like a forgotten popsicle. Problem number two, flares. Constant flares. Proxima is a super flare machine, randomly blasting out UV radiation, x-rays, and charged particles. One outburst can strip away Earth's ozone layer in minutes. DNA damage, radiation storms, mass extinction, it's like living under a broken microwave with no off switch. Now, could Earth survive? Technically, but only with a super thick atmosphere, a working magnetosphere, and probably by living underground or in deep oceans. Maybe we'd evolve into glow-in-the-dark cave squid. Who knows? Verdict? Beautiful, but deadly. Now, we're getting weird. Say hello to TRAPPIST-1, an ultra-cool red dwarf that's basically the universe's most efficient apartment complex. It hosts seven Earth-sized planets, all packed into a space smaller than Mercury's orbit. To stay warm, Earth would need to orbit at just 0.03 AU, six times closer than Mercury ever dares to get. That close, TRAPPIST-1 would appear four times larger in the sky than our sun. But don't expect blue skies and sunny afternoons. Tidal locking? Oh yeah. Earth's rotation would quickly freeze, one side in eternal daylight, the other in endless darkness. Climate-wise, the day side could overheat, 
the night site could become a frozen wasteland. But a thick atmosphere and deep oceans might balance things out, creating a narrow habitable band around the Terminator line, that twilight strip between day and night. And the sky? Get this, other planets would hang overhead like moons, not stars, disks big enough to see continents. Imagine a sister world rising over the horizon. Photosynthesis? Technically doable, but with TRAPPIST-1's dim, infrared, heavy light, plants would need to evolve. Think black leaves, optimized to absorb every bit of warmth. Flares? They're still a thing. Not Proxima level dangerous, but enough to make radiation spikes and occasional atmosphere loss a concern. And the weather? Absolute chaos. Hurricane force winds between a boiling hemisphere and a frozen one. A verdict? Not ideal, but hauntingly beautiful. Next up, Kepler-186. Kepler-186 is a chill M-dwarf with the temper of your introverted friend who just wants to read in peace and be left alone. It's dim, yes, only about 5% as bright as the sun, but here's the good news. It's not violent. No tantrums, no flares that scream instant extinction, just calm, red, and steady. To stay cozy, Earth would need to orbit at around 0.3 AU, still way closer than where we are to the sun, but a bit farther out than in TRAPPIST-1. That extra distance means we might dodge full tidal locking. There's a chance Earth could hang on to a slow, steady spin, maybe even a Mercury-style 3-2 resonance. That gives us a shot at having a day-night cycle, just a really long one. Sunlight, soft, reddish, and gentle. Low in UV, which is great for your skin, weird for your circadian rhythm, and a bit awkward for photosynthesis. Plants, they'll need to tweak their light absorbing strategies again. Less chlorophyll green, more red or black. But overall, they'd manage. Life tends to be resourceful. Climate, slightly cool on average, since we'd be getting only about 70 to 80% of the sunlight we're used to, but with a decent greenhouse effect and maybe a thicker atmosphere, it's entirely manageable. Think spring weather most of the year. And here's the real win. No frequent death flares. Kepler-186 is a relatively quiet red dwarf with a slow rotation and signs of magnetic maturity. That means fewer surprises and a much more stable environment for life to get comfy. Verdict? Surprisingly promising. A little dimmer, a little redder, and a little slower, but Earth could absolutely make it work here. Now this is a hidden gem. Kepler-62 is home to five planets orbiting a K-type dwarf star. A bit cooler, a bit dimmer than our sun, but way more chill. And absurdly long-lived. We're talking 30 to 40 billion years of fusion-fueled stability. That's triple the lifespan of our sun. Basically, this star is the cosmic equivalent of a wise old monk. We drop Earth at around 0.5 AU, right in the heart of the habitable zone. Not too close, not too far, just right. The sky, think warmer amber light. Sunsets would feel like golden hour all the time, a permanent filter for your eyeballs. The UV levels are lower, which is great for life longevity, but bad news for sunscreen companies. Seasons would be longer, thanks to a slightly extended orbital period, around 160 days instead of 365. That means more time for life to settle into stable rhythms. And since Kepler-62 is calm and quiet, with no massive stellar tantrums or hyperactive flares, Earth can enjoy normal rotation, no tidal locking nonsense. And here's the real magic. With that kind of stellar stability and lifespan, life on Earth wouldn't just survive. It would have more time than ever to evolve, diversify, and get really, really weird in all the best ways. Verdict? Absolute paradise. If Earth had a bucket list, Kepler-62 would be on it. Now, let's take a peek into Earth's possible future. Kepler-452 is a G-type star, just like our Sun, but about 1.5 billion years older and starting to show its age. It hosts Kepler-452b, a super-Earth roughly 60% larger than our own, orbiting right in the habitable zone. It's now about 20% brighter than the Sun, and that extra energy, it's not doing Earth any favors. We park our planet at 1.05 AU, a little farther out to compensate for that boost in brightness. And at first, things seem manageable, but slowly, inevitably, Earth begins to overheat. This is the slow roast version of the apocalypse. Oceans start evaporating, water vapor builds in the atmosphere, a powerful greenhouse gas in its own right. The tropics turn into saunas. The poles, 
they melt. Clouds grow thick, dense, and permanently sweat humidity back down to the surface. It's called a moist greenhouse effect, and once it starts rolling, it's nearly impossible to stop. We're not talking instant death, but over the course of a few hundred million years, Earth drifts towards becoming uninhabitable. Plants die, oceans sink, and eventually, we're on track to become Venus 2.0. Hot, dry, and decadently lifeless. And the scariest part? This is where our own Earth is headed, in about a billion years or so as our sun gradually brightens with age. The verdict? Still functioning, for now, but Kepler-452 is a time machine showing us our own endgame. Now here's the thing, the habitable zone isn't a promise, it's an invitation, a uh, maybe, because habitability isn't just about distance from a star, it's about radiation, magnetic fields, rotation, atmospheric chemistry, and a lot of luck. Our Earth works because a lot of cosmic dice landed the right way. So if you're feeling grateful for Earth today, you should. It's not just a planet, it's a miracle on orbit. So should we move it? Mm, maybe not, but it doesn't hurt to imagine, because in the end, the more we understand the universe, the more we realize just how rare home really is. And thanks for watching. Be sure to stay curious, stay grounded, and remember, when it comes to solar systems, choose wisely.